are watching Marvel Live at New York Comic Con 2015. I'm Ryan Panagos, a.k.a. Marvel's Agent M. I'm Lorraine Sink, host of The Watcher, and we're joined by the most wonderful gal, maybe on planet Earth, I think, Margaret Stoll, writer I, of Black most. Widow, the mostest. I want to make sure that. You, um, you don't say that to one. all the guests? Never. Number one. Number one. That, uh, Margaret came on my live show last night. I did a comedy show, and uh, she was very insistent that she is a number one New York Times bestselling you author. You said bestselling author. Anything I'm forgetting? And I was like, number, number one. one. <laughs> number Come on, one. Marie. I said, you don't have to say that. From now on, you, I think we're just going to call you number one. Agent M, number one. Yeah. Found it. Here Ooh. we are. Watch Some, Somebody tagged me today as Agent L, and it made me feel so special okay. in my heart. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I felt good. But you wrote this amazing book. I did. It's out this very week, correct? It is. It's out on Tuesday. If you're here at Comic-Con, you get it early. Yeah. As all things roll at Comic-Con, it's very exclusive here. I think you can tell. Yeah. Um, um, what I love about this book is, for the first time, we're really getting inside of the head of Natasha. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's really interesting, your process. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be inside of the most secretive person maybe in the Marvel Universe's brain? Yeah, if, if you were to pick someone who doesn't want anyone in her head, it would be Natasha Romanoff. And that's actually one of the ideas for the whole book is um, we sort of talked to, we found a way in which her brain was kind of compromised and she had no choice but to let this teen girl in. And um, the thing Natasha fears most, obviously, is a conversation, you know, of into someone with intimate knowledge of her life. She would rather beat like the crap of, out of you. A lot of people, with the exception of the beating the crap out of you part, can relate to that somewhat. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, most people you would find at a Comic-Con can relate to that all the what. And I myself <laughs> relate to that in, in all the what's. Mm -hmm. So Natasha, as a character, and I were circling around each other. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me in. Tell me, tell me your secrets, come on. <laughs> but I was almost too respectful and too afraid. And I was, I like couldn't do my normal jazz, you know, right. because I, I felt like she just wouldn't have it. And then very slowly, she let me into her head. I let her into my head. I sound like a mad woman, <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I read every comic. I read probably more than a hundred spy books. I read encyclopedias of weapons, bombs, munitions, military on two continents. I mean, that's what you do when you're making a video game. That's what I did for Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. You have to do it. So um, I did it, and then you become like a slightly messed up different person. <laughs> I wish you'd actually do some research, though. Like, yeah. It seems like it you're seems slacking like slack. a little bit. <laughs> well, it's, it's just a comic book. <laughs> it's just a book. No. There, it's actually, Black Widow is the hardest job I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Like, really, I've never worked so hard in my life. I wrote a 70-page outline and trashed it and started over wow. because of the Marvel fandom. I was just so, I was so honored mm -hmm. for the job and for Natasha, and I just wanted it to be perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm, this is kind of the first time we really get to see that part of Natasha's yeah. history. I mean, that you must feel a lot of onus <laughs> on yourself about that. Yeah. Well, I knew Red Room. I mean, that's yeah. what we all kind of know, mm -hmm. but that's really all we kind of know. So I knew there would be a Russian origin story. At the same time, with a teen character, you're kind of working with a legacy character. So you had this sort of origins legacy balance going that was kind of cool. Um, but I also worked really, really closely with two particular women, Sana Amanat, uh, obviously, you know, Marvel goddess, mm -hmm. and Disney's, um, Disney Marvel Press, Emily Meehan, who kind of runs the book side. And they brought really different things in a really interesting way about like sort of expertise in teendom and expertise in character building mm -hmm. and what Natasha's canon backstory would be. And I feel like we really evolved the book in a way that had everyone not wanted this to happen this way, it would never have been able to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I'm interested in, I mean, Natasha, she's been around for 50 years. 50 so years. She's such history. But at the same time, it's only been really in the last five years or so that everyone knows yeah. Black Widow. Yeah. Like everyone knows Black Widow. Did that particular, like the MCU sort yeah. of perception of her affect how you approach the book? Well, you know, people ask all the time, is it comic universe or MCU? And nowadays, you're sort of always up against the MCU in a certain way. So 
you know, I, I'm pretty clear where it's technically you're dealing with the comics world, but you are accountable mm -hmm. to the general population who come at it from MCU. So I actually think of it as MTU, which is like <laughs> what I tell myself, because Coulson is a character in this book. So I sort of were more like the obvious reference point would be S.H.I.E.L.D., Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., a show I also love. So, um, you know, it's, it's worked out, but definitely, and think about it from a teen, I'm a YA writer, right. I, so I have 14 year olds, a 14 year old just interviewed me who had never, you know, opened a comic book and who actually, like her, she was coming at it from the world of young adult, right? And then I have grown up big boys like my husband or myself who come at it like strictly from you know, the Marvel fandom. Sure. So yeah. I'm really juggling uh, readers here, but that's cool. That's awesome. Because yeah. then you're kind of opening up, you feel like you're doing your part to open up both of those worlds to something they might not have done before. You mentioned earlier uh, your video, some video game stuff. And yeah. it was in, it's in my head. I'm like, I know you've worked on video game stuff, but what, yeah. what is the breadth of that? I am so incredibly young <laughs> that I worked on Spider-Man for the PlayStation 1. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Boys and girls, long ago, there was a <laughs> miraculous device called the PlayStation 1, and it did things we could never imagine. <laughs> and I worked on that. In fact, I had been living in Vegas because I worked for another game company um, called Westwood, mm -hmm. made old army games that were the first um, multiplayer online, Command and Conquer. Yeah. So I was there for that. And um, so there's Vegas level in that Spider-Man game because I had <laughs> Vegas on the brain. And then we worked on Fantastic Four. We had a game developer. Mm -hmm. I was a co-founder of Seven Studios with my husband and we had um, a big team do Fantastic Four the first time it was a movie. Mm -hmm. So um, back in the day, also proof of my youth, um, <laughs> was two casts ago. And uh, that was a huge Marvel experience. And what, probably my first Marvel experience, sitting down and reading every comic mm -hmm. um, at that, well, everyone at that time, you know, which was up through Venom, the Venom storyline. But like, you know, then I was like, wow, I'm immersed in this world. This is what I want to do. And then I just kept reading. So that was my, my beginning. But I've worked on about 25 video games any, in the past. Any other big names that you know, um, fans would pick some up? Some Pirates of the Caribbean stuff, mm -hmm. a Jack Sparrow one, some, um, Need for Speed, one sure. of the one of the many, uh, some giant robot manga, Slave Zero, some, um, you know, the multiplayer, the Command and Conquer stuff, Red Alert stuff. Retaliation, oh, yeah. um, was around on Tiberian Sun, some space stuff, um, Earth and Beyond, and you know the beginnings of some of those games. So you're really pigeonholed. Into yeah. Being very specific <laughs> type of writer. Yeah. You know, really not branching out at all. One of my favorite jobs was Dune. It was one of the controversial Dune adaptations, and that was a good lesson for me. Now that I'm writing, mm -hmm. um, an adaptation was that you know we invented a house in Dune, one of the seminal sci-fi books, mm -hmm. which is like a major crime, really, to like <laughs> invent like a whole new story. It's like inventing, you know. I guess people like to add to the Star Wars universe, but. Mm -hmm. Now I just feel like I can't say anything. People, uh, I had beautiful creatures adapted into a movie, one of my early YA books, and I was like, I can't say a word. I've done this to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, you know, I look at it all as very expensive fan art. <laughs> <laughs> so what attracted you from video games to move more towards YA? All the words. words? Like sometimes, like with, words? sometimes in video games, you know this. That like you could write. Sometimes I was there at the beginning writing a whole storyline and I have a game designer, you know, I'm the, I was the lead designer on some old fantasy games, Zork Grand Inquisitor, I, you know, is nominated for a fancy awards for that. But uh, sometimes you're hired in after the fact and you have to like piece together words from the B-roll that were already spoken <laughs> to try to get a sentence together. I know what that's like, <laughs> I video edited. <laughs> yeah, so I mean it was, you just, from video games I learned you gotta do, you gotta be able to do anything. And I learned how to build a universe in 3D before I even learned how to build it in words, which is kind of weird. Mm, yeah. So I come at building universes by building universes, right? How, how funky is that? But I learned a lot. And I learned that you have to stick to the rules you set up. I learned your fans will hold you accountable for everything. There is no such hard review as a review you get on a video game from like a 12 year old contractor who works <laughs> for like, you know, Game Informer or whatever. Like you, you think you've seen a rough review. <laughs> yeah. So I learned, I learned about how to work with 100 people at a time. 
and I learned about like taking your tiny part of a, a job and like like just working the, the crap out of it, like doing everything you can, even if you're one cog in a hundred person machine because you love the thing you're working on. So is it then strange to go to writing a novel yeah. where you're, I mean, you're collaborating with your editors, but you're essentially alone a lot talking to imaginary people. It is. <laughs> it's super weird. Yeah. And, and I think you become friends with a lot of writers who do what you do. You love your readers. You spend a lot of time online procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you also, um, you have like the characters, they're kind of like creepily, creepily real, right? Yeah. So you have an actual Natasha in your head. I write terrible, terrible Tony Stark jokes. That's like my favorite thing to do. They probably cut a hundred pages of Tony Stark out of this book. And he's like in the Tom and Jerry cartoons, the little like angel and devil that sit on your shoulder. I kind of have like a Tony in a cap. And they're like, ring, 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 ring. That's actually what Civil War is like. I, I heard that. <laughs> and I, yeah, and they like, that's in your head. You yeah. can't get them out of your head, as you probably know. Yeah. yeah. And you have a new, a new widow. I do. Can you tell us a little bit about We the have new uh, widow? the Red Widow, who I may or may not be in full cosplay as tomorrow. At the Women of Marvel panel. At the Women of Marvel panel, shout out, if where we may or may not be. Together. Yeah, together. That's not Forever. something you want to miss. Yeah. We, um, uh, I, I really love you so much. I love you I, so much. We spent quality time together we last do. night. And I have some great pictures of us just, we're talking like this. <sighs> Lorraine is going on tour with me. I'm actually touring yeah. with Women of Marvel. That's right. We're taking it out on the road, ladies and gents. So that will be some exclusive good times yeah. in Chicago and... Santa Monica, Santa Monica, San Francisco. San Francisco, where and else? And then you're going Austin, right? Yes, and I'm going to see G. Willow in um, Seattle. So there you go. It's Adrie, all next week. our, our uh, Marvel uh, social media will be with us in uh, at the kickoff in Salt Lake City. And, Thank you. And one of our producers, the lovely Judy Stevens, will also be there. Judy! Yeah. Who's probably off Not shooting here. photos of something somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I love the tour stuff, but I, want, I do want to make sure fans understand Red Widow is yeah. this awesome new character. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. actually been in comics now, and it's yeah. like this whole big thing. Well, we had to develop a teen character um, who could really sort of share the limelight with Natasha Romanoff when we decided to do this as a YA novel. And it is very hard to share the limelight with Natasha Romanoff. Yeah. Not just everyone can do that. So we have a very special widow of our own um, teendom who is Red Widow, and she shares a lot of uh, sort of a critical backstory moment with Natasha, and then their lives will come back together um, now in the contemporary time of this book, Black Widow Forever Red, available at a retailer near you. And, um, and there, nothing is ever the same for either one of them. And uh, she has her own, I mean, you will see her full comic reveal, I mean, comic book and her character, you can see her uh, suit. And it all came out as a awesome, awesome um, one shot, mm -hmm. is part of the uh, Mockingbird, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 50th anniversary, Mockingbird number one which is actually I'm hearing sold out and they're having to reprint. Re, uh, it's great. We love yeah. That. yeah. But um, we've been giving it away at the con and people have been going nuts. But uh, it was the most fun I've ever had. Awesome. And I worked with Sana and Charles on that and mm -hmm. an amazing artist. And um, just getting to like design, you know, be a part of, be a cog in how she would look, mm -hmm. you know, for my teen readers, especially to get to see her. That's like unparalleled joy i like was in a freak out mm -hmm. for like week like i just freaked out yeah. Yeah. sana was like pitch this comic to me and i accidentally wrote the whole thing and sent it back to her i was like <laughs> that's my first one i don't really know how to do that but here's a comic i can throw it away i'll do another one tomorrow if you don't like it she was like oh my god woman calm down <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right, so where can fans find out about the tour dates, uh, about everything that's going on from you? mstoll.com backslash Black, Black Widow. Just <laughs> mstoll.com, but I'm on Twitter as uh, mstoll. I'm at Margaret underscore, underscore soul on Instagram. Uh, there's a Margaret Stoll Tumblr. So any, any social media site, you can basically find out about the tour and the book and the comic. And, um, and the woman. And the woman, I and you know, all. and there may and may not, may or may not be more good things coming your way. So you should always check back, just in case there are. Awesome.
Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me, yeah. Agent M, Agent L. Finally, you guys, <laughs> stick around right here on Marvel Live. There will be much more coming up very soon.